Hello kids, welcome to Elite Link Online. I hope you all are fine at home and I hope you guys are also studying. Yes, today we'll be doing a poem, Ode to Autumn. What is Ode? Ode is a direct address to Autumn. Ode to Autumn is written by John Keith. John Keith is a romantic poet. We have two generations of romantic poets. The first generation is represented by Wordsworth and the second generation is John Keith himself. A little introduction about John Keith. John Keith was born in 1795 and died in 1821. He died of TB, tuberculosis. He was only 26 years. What a tragic life to die so young of a disease that was not curable in those days. He also lost his parents at a very young age. In spite of all this mishap that had taken place, he wrote beautiful poems. Autumn is also known as Patjad in Hindi. John Key has given the importance of five sensory organs in this poem. The eyes, ears, nose, skin and tongue. Let us hear the poem. Season of mists and mellow fruitfulness. Close bosom friend of the maturing sun. Conspiring with him how to load and bless with fruit the wines that round the thatch eaves run. Yes, children. The first line John Keats addresses the season. It is an apostrophe or a direct address to the season autumn. It is not spring, neither summer. It is now the time for the fruits to ripen. When a fruit is ripened, it is yellow, goldenish in color. Close bosom friend of the maturing sun. Let's take the king of fruits, mango. Are your mouths watering? We get this delicious fruit in the months of April and May. But when the monsoons start, the mangoes don't taste sweet. How does a mango ripen? It ripens through the heat of the sun. Hence, John Keats calls the autumn a close bosom friend of the maturing sun. Conspiring with him how to load and bless. It seems that autumn and the sun are very close friends. Or you can say they are conspirators. Conspirators are people who plan secretly. They have planned or rather decided how to load and bless with fruits. Here him refers to the sun. With fruit, the wines that round the thatch eaves run. The sun and autumn have to load all the wines. What are wines, children? Wines are creepers. They are related to grape wines. Creepers grow up a wall around other plants or on thatched roofs. To bend with apples the most cottage trees and fill all fruit with ripeness to the core. To swell the gourd and plumb the hazel shells with a sweet kernel to set budding more. The first two lines mean the core means the deep inner part of a fruit. Every fruit is ripening deep inside. What is causing it to ripen? The sun, the heat of the sun. And who is it conspiring with? 
the autumn this is a personification a human quality only people around us can conspire but here john keats tells us that the sun and the autumn have conspired together to ripen load and bless to swell the gourd and plump the hazel shells when a mango is raw and small it grows to a bigger size that is why the word plump is used we even call a fat person plump with a sweet kernel to set budding more here the poet reminds us that even if the mango is growing on trees there are so many plants that are still loaded with flowers and still more later flowers for the bees until they think warm days will never cease for summer has or brim their clammy cell john keats tells us some plants are still loaded with flowers this is an invitation for the bees why because bees are attracted to flowers the bees collect pollen grains and nectar from the stamens stamen is a male reproductive organ of a flower they collect all this to their hives now the bees are worried they do not have enough space in their hives for honey now they feel that the warm days should stop should cease and let winter welcome itself it's enough summer has overbrimmed their clammy cell it means the honey has poured out and made their cells sticky overbrimmed is something that boils and just pours out something yeah you can take as for instance milk when you just boil milk and you're doing some work automatically it boils and it just pours so here the bees are saying that their honey is just pouring out of their cells and it's making it sticky moving on to the second stanza here autumn describes a woman all her work her activities are beautifully written by john keats children i want to ask you do you notice during summers your mothers get ready with pickles papads spices you must have seen your mothers drying chilies in the hot sun yes these are all the summer activities who has not seen the oft amid thy store sometimes whoever seeks a broad may find the sitting careless on a granary floor thy hair soft lifted by the winnowing wind the first line is a figure of speech a rhetorical question a question for which no answer is required hat means has oft means often d is you old english for you after autumn it's winter winter is snowy in winter nothing grows autumn is a season for storing grains the pulses lentils have to be stored and kept in a granary go down people in those days were not having the luxury of a fridge second comes the granary floor when the wheat or rice is cut it is beaten so that the outer cover comes out this all happens in autumn autumn is sitting on a granary floor john keats 
is imagining a woman who is sitting on a granary floor because of the threshing taking place there is breeze so the air is blowing it is a lovely imagination or on a half reap furrow sound asleep drowsed with the fume of poppies while thy hook spares the next swath and all its twine flaws yes john keats imagination that a woman is sitting by a half reaped furrow furrow is a ditch made by plowing now the crop is harvested as she sits tired she falls asleep she falls into real deep sleep yet her work her task is unfinished the poppy seeds actually work as a drowsy medicine or a sedative that puts you to sleep and sometimes like a glinder thou dost keep steady thy laden head across a brook or by a cider press with patient look thou watches the last oozings hours by hours here we are talking about an age where all the work has done manually there were no mis machines of any form even today some villagers do all their work by hand here cider means fermented apple juice it's a drink all apples are collected to remove the juice every drop of the apple juice is collected a very slow process here autumn is a woman who is doing all these activities moving on to the third stanza where are the songs of spring hey where are they think not of them thou hast thy music too while bard clouds bloom the soft dying day and touch the stubble plains with rosy hue in england everyone enjoys spring winters are snowy and everything is closed nothing grows so nobody enjoys winter snow out there and when the ice melts the plants bloom and everything looks beautiful john keep questions where's the music the bees buzzing the birds chirping the swaying of the plants trees the clouds are blocking the rays of the sun after the harvest is done but yet the next sowing is not ready it is not plucked up this is what a stubble means the pink color is the rosy hue here when the harvest is almost done it's not plucked out it gives you a pinkish color a rosy pinkish color then in a wailful choir the small gnats moan among the river sounds borne aloft or sinking as the light wind lives or dies and full grown lambs loud bleat from hilly bourn yes here the poet is talking about the gnat G N A T, nut. 
It is an insect which makes a buzzing sound like a bee. Here, the figure of speech is anomatopoeia. This is the Nath song for autumn. If the wind is severe, probably the sound gets carried. And there are other sounds too. Hedge cricket sing and now with treble soft, the red breast whistles from a garden crop and gathering swallows twitter in the sky. Yeah. Now, since the lambs were very small, they are fully grown, they bleat. The hedge cricket sings. The robin red breast whistles. All this sound is used to describe for the gnats the moon, lamb bleats, cricket sing, red breast whistle, swallows twitter, the beautiful music for autumn. Keats sees autumn has a season of fruits, season to ripen the different activities like the granary, the store, the winnowing, the cider press, and the songs. He's asking them, where are the songs of whistles, twittering, bleating, buzzing? Where are they? Have they come to an end? Yes, sir. Ode to Autumn, written by John Keats, a lovely, beautiful imagination of three stanzas. I hope you all enjoyed it, each and every line. See you soon.